Now at this point I didn't continue weighting the rest of the body. If you want to gain added experience go ahead and do so. It's really not important because we'll be focusing on the face. But then again you can keep working on weighting even after shape animating at any point in the pipeline. There's really no um, rules to follow. XSI is really great at that because everything is so well contained that you can go back at any point and edit the weight and whatnot. Okay, let's click F3, reset, reset all. Okay, so what we'll do here, we want to focus on the shapes on the mouth. We'll create a vowel and also we'll drive it with a custom parameter. Okay, so first let's create that custom parameter select the actual character I'll put the set inside the character new custom parameter set call it phonemes and expressions okay and inside that custom parameter set which is a container for our custom parameters we'll create a new custom parameter oval okay and one more for the E okay let's locate the custom parameter set and open it there it is open it great so essentially it's two sliders as such now what this will do essentially as we move the slider as such is it will control not this object because this object is already driven by this controller over here as such notice it rotates and moves great so this will be my secondary layer of control okay so let's not touch this for now what will happen when the O vowel slider moves is that this one here the next one down the hierarchy will rotate okay great so for now let's just build the O shape at the mouth and let's open the mouth and this is why I prefer enveloping before creating my shapes because now I can open my jaw as such and now I can create the O shape on the mouth great so let's do so let's create the O shape 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 manager great notice I already have one there for the E so for the O select base shape right click duplicate right click rename O vowel alright so let's make this reflect the O vowel to do this I will use the tweak tool by clicking on the M shortcut adjust the radius okay uh, and make sure you're in proportional and symmetry is important so it can do both sides alright so notice I'm quite big uh, on the radius you can make it a little smaller alright and notice you can move points polys or edges it's really incredible what you can do with the tweak tool and actually here's something else that's really impressive and I'll show you that in a moment what I was doing now is tweaking in uh, scaling so I'll show you that in a moment let's move it closer there we go here we go do this as quick as possible now notice that, that when the jaw opens and you make the O shape the bones and jaw and teeth on the top part make quite rigid and the bottom part is quite rigid but here it sort of caves in just a little bit so let's make the radius a little bit smaller because there is no bone inside here this part tends to go inside a little bit as such
here's something interesting. Notice that assuming I want to move these points, it's also affecting the points underneath. Let's assume I don't want that to happen. Right click on proportional and enable consider neighborhood. Notice that now it will only affect the neighboring points. All right. Okay, what I wanted to show, and that it's um, it's not really used because people probably don't know about it, but the Tweak tool is quite impressive. You can select an area, and uh, with the C shortcut, rotate those points. Notice? That's quite impressive. All right, and also with the X shortcut, you can tweak and scale. That's quite amazing. All right. Let's assume we're, sa we're satisfied with the, the O. Great. Let's go to the Animate tab. Now remember, when you're tweaking shapes, always make sure you're in the Create tab, OK? Never tweak shapes on the uh, Animate tab, or else it will modify your base shape, and you don't want that. So let's test that. That's the O. Great. And the E was already there. I had already created it. That's what the E gives. OK. Now that's great. We can leave that, that there for now or just close it. Actually, we'll leave it here because we need to link this stuff to this. So my slider here will drive the O vowel. OK. So here goes. Just drag and drop from this divot to this one here. It will put an equals expression right there. You can click on apply or just click on the X. That's fine. And test it. Great. Now everything's working except my rotation is not there. Let's reset everything. Reset. Reset all. That will give my characters a neutral pose. And we want to link this object's rotation, Control K. Now notice that the range is off, unlike this one, which goes from 0 to 1. This one does not go from 0 to 1, which means I must use link width. OK, let's do that. So first, let's see what axis it's on. It seems to be on the Z in additive. Yes, it is on the Z. And also, I'll just wiggle this over here just to be sure. Yeah. All right. Right click. Link with. OK, now I must link with my O vowel in the custom parameter set. Where is the custom parameter set? It's under this object. So select that object. You don't need this. And there it is. OK, link, set relative values, because you're happy with uh, what you have here when the, the O vowel is at 0. The slider here is at 0. I want the rotation to be as such. Great. Let's just open this here. Now I can go ahead and move the driving object or slider here. And when it's at 1, I want it to reflect this type of rotation here. Great. I can also go ahead and rotate it as such. That's no problem. Set relative values. Let's test it. That's great. Now you notice that it's not only doing the shape of the O, but it's also rotating the jaw. That's great. Perfect. And I have that added layer of control by moving this object. That's great. F3. Actually, let's not reset. We can also link this one to this one. So simply drag and drop for the shape. Great. <laughs> we'll do the Marlon Brando. <laughs> it's for the family. 